Lumenzio version 11 adds comprehensive support for 32-bit HDR workflows, but before we dive into it, let's take a look at what 32-bit editing in Photoshop really means. Photoshop lets us encode images at 8, 16, or 32 bits per channel. And to appreciate what makes 32 so special, I've created some rough illustrations. Let's first consider the dynamic range of an 8-bit image where I'm showing the grayscale going from black to white over what I would call SDR, or Standard Dynamic Range. With 8 bits per channel, we have 256 shades of gray, which may sound like a lot, but by the time we process it, can often show visible jumps in value, otherwise known as banding. And to avoid this, we need more shades of gray, which means more bits. And we want to work with at least 16 bits per channel, where we have many, many more shades of gray, and so we never see banding in a 16-bit image. It has the same standard dynamic range, it has the exact same black, the exact same white, so the endpoints are the same, but in between, are many more values for more accuracy to avoid the essentially math rounding errors of the lower bit depth. Now these are both great for monitors of a certain brightness, but with the latest class of much brighter monitors like the M1 MacBook Pro, we can use 32-bit and show high dynamic range with much brighter pixels than anything we had before. The old white is not the limit. We can go much brighter than that on an HDR or high dynamic range monitor. Now to see this, you need to enable a tech preview in Photoshop. Go to Photoshop Preferences, Technology Previews, and make sure precise color management for HDR display is checked. This is only available at this time for Mac, and you do need a machine from about the last four years that supports HDR. But with that, you'll be able to see this. Now, if you don't have that, you can still work in 32-bit. And one little trick for that is if you go down to the bottom here and go choose the 32-bit exposure slider, which you'll see in a 32-bit document, you can move this slider to the left or right to visualize different ranges. Even if you can't see anything more than SDR, you'll be able to visualize it by moving the slider around. So you can kind of work around it even if you don't have HDR hardware for now. Now, a few things to note about HDR. If we look at it numerically, on the left of the info panel, so you want to go up to Window, Info, and then I've got the RGB readout on the left and the right. And on the right, I'm using 32-bit measurements. And on the left, I've got 8-bit measurements. With the old SDR range, black encodes as zero in either system. And the old SDR white encodes as 255 in 8 bits or 1.000 in 32 bits. But HDR values go way beyond that. In my image, all the way up to 16 at the top. So much, much brighter than one. And this is definitely not the limit. We can go way beyond it to values that would be equivalent to brighter than the sun. So 32-bit has essentially unlimited brightness available for your use. As long as your monitor can handle it, you can push to higher values. It also has this weird thing with negative values. This bottom here is a very dark red. So I can show you that the green and blue channels here are negative because with certain colors, you can get to negative values. It's not something you can request in your paint, but when you're processing the image, you may sometimes see negative values with 32-bit for certain channels. Another important thing to know about this is we can't just always be in HDR. We still need to work with SDR for some things, like for example, many of you are watching this video not on an HDR monitor, but on an SDR monitor. And you might be wondering why you're able to see anything up here at all. And the reason for that is that on YouTube, it's gonna take my HDR content and tone map it down to SDR. In other words, it takes all these values and remaps them to another value in SDR, it's squeezing the range. Shadow values stay mostly the same, but the highlights get squeezed into an ever smaller space at the top. So you're losing a lot of contrast in the highlights with an SDR representation, and it doesn't look nearly as nice in SDR, but for learning purposes, you'll still be able to understand this video even if you don't have an HDR display. That's what tone mapping is really all about, and the HDR of the past is basically this process. We were trying to take this big range and squeeze it down. The HDR process we're working with now is actually keeping this range and displaying it the way it truly is. The other way you can get from HDR to SDR is just simply by clipping. So instead of remapping every value, you can simply say, you know what, take everything that's HDR and just clip it to the max SDR white. Everything's the same. And this is what Photoshop is going to do in a layer mask because layer masks in 32-bit space are not 32 bits. Layer masks or luminosity masks are always a maximum of 16 bits, even in a 32 bit document. And the reason, if you think about it, is that in a layer mask, zero to one is saying 0% to 100% opacity 
for a given pixel. If we were to pass through a value of 16, that would be like saying, give me 1,600% opacity for a pixel, which obviously is nonsense. So we need to be worried about this value here if we're using traditional methods of channels to make our luminosity masks. But Lumenzia will just take care of that for us. You don't really need to worry about it if you're using Lumenzia. So I think that's enough with the technical stuff. Let's look at a real image edit. I previously edited this image in 16 bits. And you see from the center of the sun that we're 254 RGB. So I've made it as bright as I possibly can as an SDR edit. So there's really no more contrast or brightness to be had here in SDR. But we can push beyond that by converting for HDR. We'll just go up to image mode and select 32 bits per channel. This is something you can do with any existing edit to make it look even better. So we'll click on 32 and we'll see we now have a 32 bit image, which doesn't look any different because of course everything that existed in SDR has a direct conversion in HDR. So we have to go now and start making some edits that push brighter to take advantage of the 32. We don't get the benefit until we start the edit. What I want to do is take the brightest parts of this image and make them even brighter. So I'm going to go use Lumenzia to target light pixels with L. Gives me a preview of the lightest areas. And I'm going to go click for a curves adjustment. So now I've got that lights luminosity mask on a curve. And I'm going to open up this curve for editing. Let's go move the image a little bit to the side. And I'm going to do something that looks pretty weird if you're only used to SDR editing. I'm going to bring in this white point, which normally when you do this, things would start clipping in the brightest areas to white, but we can go brighter than white. So as I bring this in, the image just keeps getting better. And notice something very different about this curve. See this little dashed line here at the top? What this is telling us is that it's not clipping to this value at the top of the curve. The dashed line means that this curve actually extends off the visible end of the curve. From Photoshop's perspective, this curve just keeps going straight through the top of my monitor and remaps to brighter values than SDR white. And the dashed line is basically saying, hey, I don't have a graph big enough to show you the rest of the curve, but it exists in 32-bit space up top here. So we've got this really nice improvement in the image going from before to after. And all we needed was to target the lights and make a quick and easy curves adjustment. Now you might wonder how far should you push it? Right now, I've taken this image from uh, one in 32-bit space up to nearly four, which means I doubled and I doubled again. So it's almost two stops brighter than SDR white. And you might be wondering, well, what's safe? And you could gauge it numerically with the info panel. You could gauge it with what you see on your screen, or Lumenzia gives you a way to try and edit a little bit more visually within safe limits. If we click on the map button, it darkens everything that's safe. And then if we get to an unsafe area, it's going to brighten it up. So I'm going to go back to my curve. And as I bring in this point here, you'll see at some point it gets that is showing me this is the stuff that's not technically clipped, but it might be clipped on a lot of HDR monitors. So this is sort of a warning that you probably should avoid this. It's not a legal value, but it's just kind of a risky value. And so you probably want to bring your edit back until you don't see that. And then when you're happy with that, we can just discard this preview by clicking on the X button again. And so now we've got this brighter adjustment. Now with my monitor under current settings, I'm getting a little bit of color loss. So I'm going to pull back, even though it would be safe for display on the web, Photoshop clips unlike Chrome, which will tone map. So it wouldn't look as nice on the video if I don't pull back, but that actually would have been a safe value for me to use in the final edit. Now I'm going to push even further with some dodging and burning. And it's important to note that in 32-bit space, you don't have all the same options. For example, if we look at our layers here, we can't create, for example, like black and white, color balance, vibrance. There are some limitations to the 32-bit space. And with that, if we go to dodge and burn, notice some of the options are grayed out. They're just not all available from Photoshop. So Lumenzia will use all the options available to it. It will offer alternatives where it needs to, to try and give you all the same functionality. But there are some things which are going to be grayed out in the 32-bit mode. I'm going to choose the transparent pixels mode, click on dodge and burn. And then we'll click on the white swatch in the basics panel to make sure I load things up correctly. And now I want something that's going to target the lightest pixels in the image. I don't want to just paint everywhere. So I'm going to go click on L for a lights preview. And notice that nothing is clipping here. Even though I had values that were off the top, Lumenti is automatically adjusting to keep that value. Let's go and just discard that for a second. If we go look at channels, if I look at the red channel, it's all clipped. Green channel's clipped. Blue channel is clipping as well. And the reason is that in channels, there's nothing brighter than one. And so everything gets clipped 
and to process this instead, we need to bring it down to safe values. And so if you were to load things typically through channels, you would have a clipped mask, but Lumenzi is gonna automatically avoid that for you in the 32-bit space. So here's our preview, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go click on L to make that my active selection. I see the buttons look green for it. And I'm gonna take it, the brush with high opacity and low flow and just kind of brush over the center here to give a little bit more brightness to the sun. And I'm gonna bring back my curve a little bit again, just because of the limits of this particular display here over YouTube. We can just look from before to after and see that's just a, a really nice looking sunset here. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. And now what I'd like to do is add a little bit more color here. So I'm gonna go and do an HSL adjustment in the highlights. So I'm gonna click L for lights preview, click on the HSL adjustment. And then in the HSL here, let's just bring up our saturation to give a little bit more punch to that sunset, something like that. And that gives us a final adjustment for before to after that would have taken me about, I don't know, maybe one minute to do and makes this image so much more interesting. Now there's so much more we can do with 32-bit in Lumenzia. Go to the fly up menu at the top right, go down to user manuals and look for the section on 32-bit editing, which will tell you all about some of the unique capabilities of Lumenzia version 11 for HDR editing. And now click on this next video to learn more about how to process images in HDR.